All right, guys, so today, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna put this in the same video or not, but right now we are going to go take the Subaru to a recycling center to go get weighed um, so that I can use virtual dyno to uh, do my E85 tuning and stuff like that. I was gonna take it to an actual dyno and I still might, but um, there's just been some scheduling issues with that and it's it's really hard to find an all-wheel drive dyno near me anyways and then on top of that just the schedule's not lining up like i'm a busy guy so and it's not a dyno shop either they actually build cars and stuff so they don't have time always to just you know devote time to helping me dyno my car so there's been some you know scheduling problems but i might go there eventually just get a, a for sure number but um if you have the actual weight of your vehicle the virtual dyno has been proven to be very accurate like people We'll do a dyno pull on virtual dyno on a dyno and it'll come out with the same results like within 5% of that school dyno. So we're going to go head on down and uh, I'll pick up the video back when we get there and we'll show you the weight. Alright, let's see how much this thing weighs. So he's going to pull on the scale and then it, it has a number on the on the sign over there. So let's see if he can, this thing's not made for the dirt. So we'll see how close it gets. I think it's... We're both guessing around 3,300 pounds, so we'll see. That was like 300 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> right, so now he's on it. Oh, dang, that thing's fat. Wow. See, I was right initially. I said 3,800. I said 3,800 on oh, the first time, and then he, he said I was wrong, so I made a second guess. Yeah, I did. I shouldn't have. There you go. <laughs> I was right the first time. I said 3,800. I guess the, the 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 weight they have online is probably without any liquids in it or something. I, yeah, it could be a dry weight. Yeah. Because I was like, this thing's a wagon. Man, I mean, that's kind of shitty, man. <laughs> you're all be like, oh, uh, this thing's heavy. If you change, if you took all the interior out, then you'd be at 3,400. Probably. I'm not gonna do that though. No. <laughs> Streetcar. <laughs> Dang, that was. Well, I guess you got some work to do. I mean, you gotta dry ice your interior and take all the stuff out of it. Not the factor in my weight, the weight of that gas back there in my backpack. I oh. mean, I weigh 175. So. Okay, so let's just say you weigh 200 pounds, so the car is 3,500 at that point. Yeah. So I mean, you're, you're still kind of close, but it's at least 100 it's pounds. Not, enough, not as bad as 38, though. Yeah. Okay. That's funny that the number came up and I was like, oh, that's a little heavier than I was expecting. <laughs> I'm really surprised. Like, to be honest, I thought it was going to be around 34. Dang. Well, now you, know, now you know at least. Well, I guess that, that, that's a good thing. It's fast for how heavy it is, right? I guess so. Yeah. I'll take it. All right, guys. So we're going to be doing some virtual dyno stuff. So I want to make my first pass and just, I think I got the correct parameters loaded up, which would be uh, RPM, throttle, precision uh manifold relative pressure corrected and the y band o2 sensor um i think those are all the things i need to log but that's why i'm going to do the test pass to see if that's what i need and uh if not then i can put whatever else i need on there and then do another one but we're going to go do the first um test pull with the uh, virtual dyno so let's get into it So I got the graphs overlaid here. So it only registers once you go full throttle. So you can see some of these are only, cause I was kind of rolling into the gas on the blue and the green pass. Uh, but the red pass, let's just narrow it down to here. Red pass, I got on it at a lower RPM and I was on it full throttle. Um, so this is probably my cleanest graph. See my air fuel ratios right down here. Uh, and it says the peak, was, so it's 265 wheel horsepower at 5,400 RPMs. 280 foot-pounds of torque at 4,400 RPMs. I think that's probably about where it was because the other ones were in the same ballpark, you know, give or take, but, you know, 271 wheel horsepower, 269 wheel horsepower, 271 foot-pounds, 279 foot-pounds. So they're really close. So I'm guessing that's about where I'm at. I thought it was going to be a little bit more than that, to be honest, but um, it's not, not too bad for being on 91. 
and my 91 tune is a little bit conservative. We'll turn it up a little bit on E85, but next step is going to be putting E85 in the tank and seeing what it does just purely from the switching over of the fuels. We got some E85 in the car, uh, so now we're ready to do the base E85 uh, dyno pull to see how much power it makes on E70. So if you look at my E-Flex Plus app, you can see that it's at 70% ethanol content right now. And the reason I'm doing 70% for my tuning is because that's the lowest um, ethanol content that I will get at the pump where I'm located. Sometimes it gets as low as 50, but um, where I'm located in, in SoCal, it usually only gets down to like E70. So if I tune for E70, uh, any ethanol content I run will be safe uh, if it's above E70. So that's the reason for that. So I'm going to do what I did before with the 91 uh, dyno pole, and we're going to do the same thing um, with the E85 for E70 right now. So I printed out the graph so it's easier for you guys to see uh, and easier for me to explain it. This red line is the E70 dyno pole and this blue line is the 91 octane dyno pole. Uh, you can see there's a pretty large difference uh, and the curve is very similar just kind of moved up like it's just shifted up. The boost curve is pretty much the same. With 91 octane we make 265 horsepower. And then on E70, we made 292 horsepower. And then a big difference in torque. We got 280 foot-pounds of torque on 91 and 318 foot-pounds on E70. So that's a pretty big difference. And it's definitely noticeable in the car. Like, you can feel this difference. So that's quite the difference. Honestly, that's more of a difference than I thought there would be between the two fuels. Uh, and yeah, like, like I said, this is literally just filling up the tank with E70, nothing else. I did nothing to the tune at all. The only changes that were done was with the E-Flex fuel piggyback computer. That's the only thing that did anything. So when I put the fuel in, it monitors the ethanol content and changes the air fuel ratio based on that air ethanol content. And that's all that was changed. And this is the power that I got from that. This was the power difference between those two fuels. So I'm pretty impressed with that. It is making me a little um, nervous, I guess, uh, to see how much power difference there will be between um, just switching the fuels and actually tuning for E70, like tuning the timing and stuff. But I guess we'll have to find that out. Hopefully um, we pick up some more power because I was looking for about 320 wheel. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get that, but um, it looks like the torque's in that range. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, so we're gonna do a little bit of dialing in some timing and see if we can get those numbers up a little bit more. I don't know how much they'll go up from here, um, but there's only one way to find out. So let's get into it. I have a new um, tune for the uh, flex fuel on the E70. Uh, and I got the base timing map opened up right now. Um, so as just a kind of a starter, this is a timing table for 91 octane. So it's timed so that it doesn't knock uh, and it makes the most power. From a good 91 octane uh, timing map, uh, in the wide open throttle ranges, you can increase the timing by about four to six percent, and that's going to be where you're going to have peak torque on e E85. That's just kind of the rule of thumb. And now that when you tune on E85, you can be a little bit less careful because, like, when you do 91, you want to just increase these by like two degrees. Watch for knock. If it uh, makes more power and you want to add some more, add another two degrees, one degree, whatever. Look for knock. But um, the car will not knock on E85. It just won't. So I don't have to worry about knocking so much as just hitting the peak torque. Usually I would just do two degrees and then do a pull, see what it did. Do another two degrees, see what it did. But now I'm just going to go straight for four degrees. Because uh, last time I did this, I think it was like, yeah, either four or five was like peak torque. So... Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just hit it with 4 degrees uh, above 1.60 and probably above 2800 RPM. So, And I'm not going to hit some of these spots right here. 
uh, I'm gonna smooth it out and stuff. That's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, I'm gonna keep going through, do a little bit of smoothing, basically just interpolating vertically, horizontally, uh, making sure all the values are correct. And then we'll flash this onto the car and we'll go do a pull. After that first run, um, you can see that the torque is pretty much the same peak number, uh, but there's a little bit more area above the or under the graph with the red pole, which is the newest one I did. The horsepower is quite a bit higher, so we went from having uh, 292 wheel horsepower on that previous one to uh, 309 wheel horsepower, and then the torque's the same, 320, 318, pretty much the same. So uh, that was with adding four degrees of timing. Since my 91 octane tune is pretty conservative, um, I'm gonna add another degree of timing in and see if I get any power gains. And if I don't, then I'll kick it back a little bit or might leave it depending on what it looks like. But uh, I'm gonna go into the table again and, and add, add another uh, degree of timing in where I added the timing before as well. All right, so the car seemed to like the changes I made just then. So I added, I ended up adding two degrees of timing. So as you can see, the green line was my last one, or my most recent one that I just did, and the red one was the one, the first one I did. Um, and there's quite a big pickup in power, and we see now that we have 317 wheel horsepower and 334 foot-pounds of torque. So we did a, we gained a lot from that. Boost was the same. Uh, I didn't rev out all the way. I only revved to 6,500, but that doesn't make that big of a difference because not much happens after that. But you can see the way the graph shaped the same. It's still quite a bit more power. So um, I'm trying to decide at this point if I should add more. Yeah, so I think, I think I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna add another degree. The yellow run is the one I just did. The green one was the previous um, best power number. And you can see the graphs are really close. Okay, so I picked up a little bit of torque and I lost horsepower. So uh, that two degrees that I just added in, I'm gonna pull that back out. Cause uh, that tells me that I went over my peak um, power on E85, peak timing. So I'm going to pull out that timing I just added in and then uh, uh, that should be perfect at where what power level we're at. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, hope you learned a little bit about the process of tuning timing and from the previous video tuning, you know, the uh, math scaling and stuff like that. I have a few uh, big projects coming on in the near future once I finish this semester of school. Uh, I'm going to be basically finishing the power side of this car, uh, which is going to require another retune. And I'll be making a video on tuning um, boost and some other stuff involved with that. So stay tuned for those videos. Stay tuned for the install video. If you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, please click the like button down below. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you know anybody who might like this video, please share the video with them. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.